Hello and welcome to this Vivado Quick Take video using Vivado Design Suite with Revision Control. Why would you want to use Revision Control with Vivado Design Suite? It automates the critical management of the development. Milestones are backed up. You can revert to a previous milestone if necessary and changes are logged so you know who made a change and when they made that change. If set up properly, it can also reduce compile times because you can take advantage of dependency tracking and only build when the input changes. You can also take advantage of parallelism because independent steps can be run in parallel. We found that most of our customers use some form of revision control and in fact the ultra-fast design methodology guide UG949 recommends using revision control with Vivado Design Suite. This slide shows the names of 12 commonly used revision control systems. Some of these are commercially available and others are open source. So in the previous slide you saw 12 revision control systems. That's not a comprehensive list. So because of the large number of revision control systems available, Vivado's revision control philosophy is to be designed to be friendly to revision control systems. It does not provide direct integration with any one specific tool. So we generally prefer ASCII-based internal files whenever possible. So for example, our XML project files. We tolerate hidden dot files and read-only sources locked in revision control. Some, but not all, of these revision control systems add hidden dot files to manage some of these sources and then also mark the files as read-only if they're currently locked in a revision control system. And we also try to minimize file updates when opening projects and only write to files when necessary. We've also designed Vivado to work with a number of different use models. So both in the GUI flow and the non-GUI flow, project flow and non-project flow, and also with revision control systems set up as both distributed or centralized systems. So Xilinx has two documented revision control strategies. The trade-off is flexibility versus the number of files that are required to manage. So in the lower left corner, if you have a smaller number of files to manage, you have a reduced amount of flexibility. And the scenario in the upper right corner, you do have a larger number of files to manage, but in trade for that, you get much more flexibility. So Xilinx recommends the scenario in the upper right corner, which provides the maximum flexibility. It gives you the option to use an IP in a future release of Avado without upgrading. And the other benefit is you get a shorter runtime to rebuild the project because all of the sources do not need to be regenerated every time. If you choose not to use this strategy, there is the alternative documented flow on the minimum number of files that are needed to be checked in. However, be aware that you, the trade-off is reduced flexibility and additional runtime. So let's get into an overview of the recommended directory structure to get the maximum benefit when using Vivado with the revision control system. So a key is to manage different source types in separate remote directories. You can use a work directory to compile the design and to create Vivado projects. When you set up your Vivado project, use remote sources from these various directories and elect not to copy them into the project. Keep them in their current location. And then either manage revisions from the remote sources area directly or use it as a local sandbox for the project. So on the right hand side this graphic shows a typical scenario where you have your design, underneath that is a working directory, and then at the same level as the working directory are the various sources, the RTL sources, the IP sources, the constraints, etc. This is a high level overview of what the project would look like under revision control. So the things in the gold clouds are the things that are checked into revision control. So we have our project, our XPR file, we would manage that with the revision control system, and then all of the remote sources, the VHDL, Verilog, block diagrams, XCIs, constraints, etc. However, we would not check in our dot sources directory, our data, cache, and runs directory. These are derived objects, they include temporary files that Vivado is using, but are not required to be managed in order to rebuild or recreate your entire project. 
And not only would it be inefficient to check these files into a revision control system, it can also cause additional trouble and we strongly encourage you not to check these files into a revision control system. So focused on the documented approach for maximum flexibility, if you're using a project, manage the XPR file or there's a tickle script to recreate the project. It's called Write Project Tickle and it generates a script to recreate the project. So you have the choice, you can either manage the XPR file or manage the tickle script that just recreates the project every time. Do not check in these project subdirectories as I mentioned in the previous slide. Use your own judgment on the directory structure for the RTL, for your constraints, etc. And for IP and IP integrator sources, manage the entire directory tree. So generated sources can be used in a future release of Avado. So if you check in all the files in the IP or the block design directory, then in a future release of Avado, even if that IP has been changed, you have the everything you need in order to maintain that and you're not forced to upgrade the IP. And in addition, you don't have to keep regenerating the IP because you've already regenerated, which will give you the additional uh, improvement in runtime. So on the right hand side here, it shows a typical scenario where you have a work directory. Inside there is either the XPR file or the tickle script to recreate the project. Outside of that, you have all your RTL sources, your test bench, and your constraints. If you're using Vivado HLS source files, scripts, example projects, and packaged IP, you should check those into your revision control system. Manage the entire system generator directory for DSP sources. Manage your scripts and docs. Any scripts or docs that you're, you've written to go along with your design, manage those as desired. And then for SDK, manage the HDF file, which is the handoff file between Vivado and SDK. If you prefer the minimum file approach, the recommendation is similar but just slightly different. There's no change to how you would manage your XPR file or the tickle script to recreate the project. The difference is for IP, you could check in only the XCI file and then you could recreate the output products for that particular IP but you have to note that it can only be recreated using the same version of Avado that the IP was created. And likewise for IP integrator, you could check in only the .bd file or a tickle script to recreate the entire block design using write bd tickle. In both of these scenarios though, if you don't have all the IP, you only have the .bd or the tickle script, then you can only recreate this in the same version of Avado that you originally created your project. But the benefit is there's much fewer files to check in. The downside, again, is that it's going to take longer runtime because all of the IP and the design will need to be regenerated. This approach has similar recommendations for Vivado HLS, System Generator, Scripts and Docs, and for SDK. These steps are the same in both recommended flows. A couple quick best practices for revision control. So to create that tickle script, you can use write project tickle to create a template that you can modify. This is also available as an option in the GUI. And for IP integrator, you can use write BD tickle. This creates a tickle script uh, to recreate just the BD. And this is available in the GUI also under the export menu. But as I mentioned, it's highly version dependent, just like the IP. So you would only be able to reuse that script in the same version of Avado. We've also had customers that have had a lot of success scripting their check-in and check-out flow. So some of these revision control tools allow, uh, with a mouse, you can select files to check in and check out. A number of our customers have had success scripting this, so it's much more reproducible and not as error-prone. In summary, and for additional information, there's two documented approaches to help you decide which files to manage. One approach provides maximum flexibility and the least rebuild time, and the other approach provides the minimum number of files that need to be managed. The Xilinx recommendation is to use the maximum flexibility, least rebuild time approach. A key is to use remote sources and not to try to manage the project directories. Only the project file or the tickle script to recreate the project is what needs to be managed. 
You can also review Chapter 2 in UG949, the Ultrafast Design Methodology Guide for Vivado Design Suite. That was recently updated with the information in this video, plus additional information. Thank you for watching this Vivado Quick Take video. Thanks for viewing this Quick Take. If you found this video useful, you might be interested in taking some of our more in-depth training available at zarlings.com training. We feature a variety of courses, both live and online, intended to make you proficient with Vivado and its features. We look forward to your participation. Thanks again for making Vivado successful.